called the, the Virtual Adventures of Culture Hero. Everyone likes a little story time. So um, once upon a time, there was a woman named Dara. And every day, she was passionate about bringing people together to be more themselves at work. But one day, offices emptied out and gatherings of people were banned. And because of that, she worried she might lose her business because it was all in person. And because of that, she was worried whether or not her special sauce would translate into the online world. And because of that, she got curious and creative about these constraints. And because of that, she tested and tried and listened and responded until finally, she realized that real connection and intimacy is possible at a distance when intention is involved. And ever since then, she's applied this learning and intention to all of her virtual team adventures and has still been able to live her passion of helping people connect and be more themselves at work. The end. So this is a lovely little story. Uh, we do a lot of storytelling with Culture Hero uh, and that's actually the story spine. So if you are interested in story, uh, you, you have like a beginning and then it's because of that, because of that and then. So a lot of you might've heard of that before. Um, but yeah, if you would have asked me, you know, two months ago to bring our offerings online, I would have told you to piss off because for us, we love human connection. We love interaction. We love energy and being in the space together. Um, but when things, you know, when shit hit the fan with COVID, we had to really make a decision to kind of just get over ourselves and start to talk to people and ask clients, what are your challenges? What's happening for you? And start to create an offering where we feel like we could really show our special sauce of play and, and, and engagement into the virtual world. And so for us, it's been a really interesting journey, um, hearing about everyone's, you know, kind of challenges and, and triumphs throughout this time. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, for us, it was, it's been empowering to be able to, again, be able to create this intimacy at a distance. And we really hope that you get to feel that today um, in this not so much a webinar webinar. So thank you so much. Over to you, Eric. Uh, thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. I just want to sort of preface that I probably I'm up against the big guns here in terms of engagement with Dara. So I don't know if I'm quite going to be able to match her. Also, uh, because of what Academy XI does, we're I wouldn't say dry. We, we teach um, some cool things, but it's a little bit more technical. So I'll spend maybe this just short period of time now telling you a little bit about Academy XI, um, uh, what we do, why engagement virtually is so important to us. So some of you may know us, some may not. Um, we're a, uh, a training provider specializing in emerging disciplines. Um, so by that, I mean any job role where there's going to be more people doing that job next year than there are now and more people doing that job the year after that. So high demand um, disciplines um, is what we teach and that falls broadly into uh, design, business and digital. So despite my accent, we're very much an Australian company. Um, I'm Canadian, but we, I live in Sydney. We've got offices or campuses, I should say, um, here in Sydney and also in Melbourne. Um, but that being said, we have for a number of years now been about a 50-50 split virtual face-to-face -face training organization. Um, so, and that, yeah, that predates COVID. So we're in a bit of a, an interesting, unique position where we've been um, building up our sort of digital virtual capability in terms of training for a number of years now. Um, and we do that, uh, we deliver training to individuals. So for lack of a better word, I'll use B2C, so our, our business to consumer offerings, and then also our B2B offerings. So I'm actually um, head up team training for corporates and governments. So that's another main focus um, of ours. Broadly, in, in the virtual world for all, our, all of our online training, our biggest challenge has always been, and probably will always be, how do we make training engaging online? Um, because drop-off rates are known to be super high um, for online, uh, online training. So um, it's also difficult because our training, as I mentioned, is, is fairly technical in nature. So we teach human-centered design, product management, agile, data analytics, uh, digital marketing, augmented reality. Very cool, interesting, fun subjects, but they are fairly meaty. So how do you, you, know, how do you keep people engaged in a world where you're not at the front of a class, where you can't come around when they ask a question and sit and stand over their shoulder and help them with something, how do you make sure they stay engaged in that world? And so a lot of our work over the last few years has been dedicated to figuring that, that, the answer out to that question. Um, in the corporate space as well, uh, 
corporate training, people aren't always as engaged as you'd hope they would be. Um, sometimes they get dragged kicking and screaming into a training program. And so, especially if it's online. So our goal then becomes almost making it so engaging that they can't help but get involved and want to do it. And, uh, and we sort of tend to win converts these days, which is fantastic, but it didn't come about overnight. And we definitely use a bunch of tools, specific tools to do that and to make it engaging. So later in the session, I'll talk more about what we use and what's um, been successful with us. So that's enough for me for now. I'll pass back to Dara. Thank you, Eric. I just want to acknowledge our beautiful synergy of the right brain and the left brain coming together for this webinar, your technical side and our creative side. So I think it's very complimentary and very fan fantastic. Okay. <laughs> um, so I need to make sure that everyone's paying attention. So I'm going to ask you a question. These are called ding moments. Welcome to the ding. Um, can anyone remember what our little story, what my story was called? Go ahead and, and raise your hand if you can remember. A magical fairy will bring you a special treat if you get the answer right. Does anyone remember what this, the name of my story was? Any of those 18 non-video participants out there? Does anyone remember? Hmm. I think it had I culture know. hero in the name. Is that, is that a bit of a guess? Good one. Can anyone Maybe remember? Yes. All right. These are, this is going to, these are, you got to stay on your toes here, people. It's called The Virtual Adventures of Culture Hero. Okay. So just a little reminder. Um, don't worry. There'll be more ding moments coming up. So make sure you're on your toes there, people. Cool. Okay. So um, what's going to happen now is Eric and I are going to dive into, um, actually, no, just kidding. We're going to give you a chance to break out. So um, for us, it's really important. If you are on, um, if you're not sharing your video at the moment, we are gonna ask you to share your video. We're gonna jump into some breakout rooms. I'm sure many of you have, are very across Zoom, uh, probably a little bit too across at the moment, um, but we really do find breakout rooms are a great chance for you to meet each other. I'm sure a lot of you are in similar roles and things like that. And um, there's such few moments now, obviously with uh, being, um, you know, social distancing for us to meet new people. So this is a great networking opportunity for you as well. For those um, design thinkers out there, I'm sure you've already heard of the I like, I wish, I wonder. And so for us, we want you to start to think about and ponder and talk about um, your own experiences right now with virtual meetings. So think about how you've been going so far with your virtual meetings, whether it's been um, in your work or with your friends or with your um, you know, going to webinars and things like that. We're gonna pop you into breakout rooms of about four people. And I'd love you to think about what have you really liked about virtual meetings that you've experienced? What do you uh, wish was different? And what do you wonder is possible? So I like, I wish, I wonder. We'll give you about eight minutes. So you'll have about two minutes each uh, to share your ideas. Um, but it's a great way to start to think about like, what's your own experience when it comes to engagement online? What do you really like? What do you want to be different? And what do you want to explore that's possible? So Marilee, our lovely lady behind the corner, uh, behind the curtain, I mean, is going to kick us into a breakout room. And we'll see you back in the main room in about eight minutes. Um, I do ask that you please um, make sure that everyone gets a chance to be heard uh, and share their ideas of the I like, I wish, I wonder. All right, Marilee, let's kick it. Welcome back everyone. This is always an exciting moment when people start to spill back into the main room. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you had an opportunity to meet some new people um, who don't live in the house with you. That's always exciting. <laughs> and you got a chance to just hear some insights from other people who are obviously in a very similar situation, but perhaps are getting, um, having different experiences around what the world of uh, virtual engagement means and the virtual meetings and things like that. So hopefully you got some cool insights and you were able to share. Um, so another ding moment, get excited. For those of you who arrived um, a little bit late, uh, ding moments are just the opportunity for us to make sure that we're paying attention, make sure that we're engaged. Um, in this particular ding moment, I'm gonna ask you to get out of your chair 
because I think for a lot of us where we're sitting in our chair for most of the day. So this is a little opportunity to just stretch your legs. Um, it's still early in the morning. If you are uh, a non-video participant, um, by all means, still stand up and uh, have a go. Uh, I really like this activity because it just gets us to be a little bit more in our body. Uh, and it's just a mirroring activity. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to ask you to mirror exactly what I do. So if you wanna put your hands up to your screen and then just really consciously try and mirror my movements. So this is a bit of, I think this is from Karate Kid, a bit of wax on, wax off. <laughs> I'm doing like a strange squat motion where my legs are gonna <laughs> get a good workout from this. All right, now I'm gonna make it a little harder. And one of my favorite moves. Oh. <laughs> Eric, now you're the leader. You do some movements and we'll mirror you. Oh no, I didn't see this oh, coming. This. Um, oh, I've got one that I like. It's called the upwards button pushing dance. Right. Upside down computer dance, alternate name. And now go sideways. This music is much more appropriate, Marilee. Got, I got you. I'm just dancing. <laughs> To everyone in this room, I didn't know this was going to happen. So uh, if my moves aren't as good as they could be, <laughs> I haven't practiced this bit. All right, awesome. That's, that's enough mirroring for, for now. Whew. That's a really fun activity you can do with your team. Uh, what we usually do when we're working with smaller groups is you each person gets to be the leader. So you would have called out someone else to show their sweet moves. Um, it's just a really good way to get people up and out of their chair. Um, if you don't feel like getting out of your chair, you can still do some of those funky moves. I like that button pushing one, Eric. Thank you. All right, um, so I'm going to hand it over to Eric now and we're going to start to explore some tools uh, around how to uh, take your virtual trainings and things to the next level. So over to you, Eric. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, I thought, wanted to use this time sort of follow on what I was talking about earlier um, to dive a little bit into the different tools that Academy XI uses um, to deliver our training, uh, to deliver our training programs online. So just a few caveats. So this could be delivered to a corporate. Um, it could be delivered to um, a group of individuals in our B2C courses. Um, we deliver training that is one hour long. We deliver training that is three months long um, and everything in between. So we've got a whole sort of gamut of options, uh, online options and face-to-face -face usually. Uh, right now, everything's online, of course. Um, but there's a lot there. And so how do we remain engaging across all those different formats and lengths? Um, so I'm gonna start with the most sort of, not basic, but the simplest version of the training that uh, sort of simplest toolkit that we use in the training that we offer and um, go right up sort of the scale to the sort of the Cadillac version of what we deliver in terms of online training and what we use to do that. Um, and I'll talk about the benefits and the drawbacks of the different tools that we use um, as we go through. So. I guess in general, um, our training breaks out into two different sort of toolkits that we use. Um, one toolkit uh, you'll be largely familiar with. So our kind of core bundle is Zoom or Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Docs, um, Slack, and something called Miro Board, which is a, an online collaboration tool. Um, interestingly kind of comes out Miro comes out of the UX user experience design space, which is one of the um, disciplines that we teach, but I think they're probably loving life right now because it's amazing as a collaboration tool generally. Um, and uh, yeah, highly recommend you guys to, they have a free version that you can kind of play around with. Um, so definitely something you could look at um, after the session. Um, what I'm gonna start off by doing is give you an example of a short form corporate training session um, that, we would, that we offer. Um, this is kind of my space, so it's something that I do regularly. Um, so we do a lot of different formats of corporate training. One of the ones that we do a lot that seems to work well is to have like two half-day sessions split up by about two weeks um, for various reasons that I'll get into. So what we'll usually do prior to the first session is we will um, sometimes even have like a pre-session with the whole team or with the managers and familiarize them with the virtual tools. Um, so Miro board, for example, um, the reason that we do that is because through trial and error, we have discovered that teaching people a discipline like human centered design, for example, while people are learning a new virtual tool does not work. Um, like their brain can only kind of absorb 
um, one of those things at a time. Um, so we'll give them in like a low pressure environment. Hey, play around with Miro board, get used to Slack if you don't use it and have that be like a pre-session. And then by the time they get into the main actual like learning session, they're already kind of have that out of the way. And a lot of the time, especially in the current COVID scenario, that pre-session has actually been really valuable for people because they are just learning how to use all these tools, um, not just for this training session, but more broadly. So that's um, a good start. Um, then during the first session, we deliver theory through Zoom or Microsoft Teams, especially if it's a government organization, because they're joined at the hip to Teams now. Um, we'll use breakout groups like we just have in this session. Um, uh, and that's for project work and we'll use Miro board as the collaboration tool to execute that project work as well. We will always try and bring in a, um, uh, a live project or problem statement from the company. Um, all of these are done because it helps to engage the people that are involved in the session. Um, as opposed to just talking at someone for a couple of hours. At the end of the session, we'll assign homework. Um, that's when we introduce Slack as well. Um, and then in that two week period in between sessions, uh, we'll usually have the project teams working on their project using a combination of Miro board and Slack. Um, Slack for, for just like regular communication, the Miro board is like, you know, visuals and imagery, and you can actually plunk, plunk you know, documents and, and images in there. Um, and then in the second session, it becomes a presentation of project work as groups, um, both to the instructor and to your fellow learners. Um, Q&A sessions, getting people to talk about what everyone else did, the challenges, um, the, the things that went really well. Um, it's interesting because often aside from the projects themselves, people talk about their experience with the online suite of tools too and how they found it engaging. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of how an average, I guess, virtual session looks like with those tools. Um, there are other products within all of those different suite uh, of like types of tools, but that's what we use anyway. Um, and in like flipping from corporate to our B2C courses, uh, we teach 10 week courses using almost that exact same suite of tools, even though the format is much longer. Um, it actually isn't that much different in terms of how it runs. Um, the whole goal is to make it feel like a classroom um, overall, we find that with the learning that we deliver, instructor engagement and participation is big, but, learn, but the group participation, like doing project work with people from your, like in a cohort, that's the big thing. If you don't have that, it's, it's very difficult to keep engaging over period of engagement over periods of time. Online learning broadly in the industry education is, is the drop off rates are extremely high. Um, which is kind of terrifying and something we've been working to, to overcome for years, basically. Um, so now I'll move over to the second type of training that we deliver, which is uh, learning management system based training. So um, for some of you that don't really do this stuff, uh, might not be super exciting. I, I geek out over it, um, as you'll see. But um, uh, anyway, just bear with us and hopefully you'll, you'll learn some new things about education delivery. Um, so a learning management system is very similar to a CMS for all of you marketing people out there. So custom content management system, but instead of dropping your website content and updating it, um, you've got learning materials in there. So inside the LMS, like our LMS programs, we have three levels. We have kind of like a foundations beginner level training. Then we have an intermediate level training program, which is, tends to be longer. And then we have kind of our, yeah, like our really high end, really socially engaged um, uh, type of courses. So I'll run through them really quickly. Um, so at the base, we have our foundations courses. So these are built in. So we, we use two different LMS systems. One is called YZ and the other one is called NovoEd. YZ is the more simpler one we've been using for a number of years. Um, as you can imagine, YZ is also way cheaper than NovoEd, um, but uh, they there's a good reason for both and they're both useful. So our foundations courses uh, critically are self-paced so you, you can just log in, you've got a bunch of modules, it's videos, it's slide decks, it's activities and learning checks. Um, you submit those activities. There's an instructor that marks them in the background, but you don't interact with anyone live. So it isn't as engaging as some of the other options, um, but it's great for people who are already engaged, introducing them to a new discipline um, and they wanna learn something and they can do it in their own time. It could take them five days to complete the course. It could take them six months. It's totally up to them. 
Um, so then the next level up are deep dives. So it's YZ again, it's the same learning management system, but here we have a live instructor. Here we, you go in as a cohort, so you go, go in with a group of students. Um, we use Slack and uh, Zoom off the side of the learning management system as well um, to make sure that the engagement keeps up and there's project work critically. So uh, people are getting into groups, they're doing project work, um, uh, they're sort of engaging that way. And then Slack is also a good engagement tool too. So that's kind of the next level up. So those are our 10 week part-time courses that are very popular with that sort of delivery method. And then finally, we have sort of the cream of the crop, something that we just moved to about six months and we're developing courses at breakneck speed because it's going incredibly well, is this uh, NovoEd learning management system that has, it's basically, this isn't really what it is, but the easiest way to describe it, it has Facebook built into a learning management system. Um, so you've got instructors, students, uh, posting projects live, you've got uh, people commenting on them, you've got people working uh, to collaborative, collab collaboratively on projects in system. Um, you've got uh, instructor videos, you've got guest professors coming in. Um, it's super cool. You can even go off on tangents and do like alternate, like little paths of learning that then tie back into the main program uh, of, of learning. Um, so yeah, we've got two programs, uh, two courses basically, two disciplines uh, up running on this right now. Um, some of you will be familiar with NPS scores, um, which are basically just surveys like how are we doing, how are you enjoying it? And so our NPS scores in this high-end NovoEd product are often exceeding our face-to-face -face course NPS scores when we were still able to do that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our suite of online tools. We have no intention, I mean, we'll always be a digital provider of training, we'll always be a face-to-face -face provider as well, but COVID has been an interesting um, experience for us in just literally having to do everything we do online and porting it uh, over and those were the tools that we've used. So we're basically running everything that we ever used to run like virtually right now. So we've basically taken all our face-to-face -face training, brought it over. We're using the learning management systems to deliver stuff we always delivered online. Um, and it's, yes, yeah, the new world for us right now. So hopefully some of that's useful. Um, now back over to Dara. Guess what time it is. Ding moment to make sure you all are paying attention. Now, what are the two different types of tools Academy XI uses to deliver trainings online? What are the, the two, two different toolkits, kind of. With the two different kinds of toolkits. Novoid. Yep, so that's kind of one type of one sort. Anyone else want to I dropped a, a ton of info on you guys just there, so apologies for that. So I tend to do that, um, and it makes it difficult. No worries. Yeah, it's uh, LMS and Slack, Google Docs, Mirrorboard. You got it. Win to Fernando. Fernando for the win. Way to go, Fernando. <laughs> All right. So. Thank you so much, Eric, for uh, explaining just some of the really high level tools and some really cool technology that we can use in order to engage people um, from a training perspective. So thank you. Now we're just going to shift gears into talking a little bit more about what it means to go from a virtual meeting to a virtual experience. Um, we've actually jumped into this space now of calling them virtual adventures, because for us, it's really about um, creating a totally different world in a totally different space when we're utilizing uh, an online platform. And for us at Culture Hero, we're going to, uh, I'm going to have Marilee come in and, and explain a bit as well. But for us, it's really about two things. It's about design and delivery. And so for all of you kind of HCD geeks out there, I know you love your designing and delivery. Um, but for us, it's really um, important that we create intention. And for a lot of you who came in uh, at the beginning, we, we set an intention around not only sharing tips and things with you, uh, but also giving you some touch points and some opportunity to actually feel what it means to be engaged through the different mediums um, of like the breakout rooms and things like that. So I'm going to pass it over to Marilee, who is our learning designer at Culture Hero. And she's going to take us through a couple of tips on how do you actually design learning virtually. So over to you, Marilee. Thanks, Dara. Just give me one second. All right. This is why we have two people doing this stuff, because <laughs> otherwise you get stuck. 
Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share with you, I guess our top kind of tips around design because it's something that uh, we're very passionate about as Dara said. Uh, and just things that you could really actionably use in whatever experience you're designing, whether it's a meeting or something bigger. So my first tip is really around setting the connection conditions and context before you get into the content. And this is not this is something that's often skipped over. We'll sort of go straight to the fact of um, talking about how oh this is our weekly stand up. Uh, here's all the reasons we're meeting for this stand up and go straight into that. And we won't take time to necessarily uh, check in with one another, talk about why we're here, uh, set the context for the meeting. So setting that, uh, those three Cs before we get to the fourth C content, uh, can be a really powerful way of setting a foundation for whatever experience you're gathering. Which kind of leads us on to the second thing. One of the uh, schools of design that we have trained in uh, at Culture Hero is the Chaos Pilot Learning Arch methodology. Uh, I'll leave you to Google it later on, but it's based around this idea that any experience we're designing, uh, we, where we have some learning involved, uh, we want to create a, a journey. And it kind of mirrors, as you'll see here in the, the diagram I've got, it mirrors almost a, a hero's journey. It mirrors a narrative journey. We want to have this sense of we're setting a firm foundation, we're setting our, uh, our conditions, our context, our connection, so that we have enough energy to kind of go up through the journey of the meeting, of the learning experience, uh, so we can hold people's attention and then have a sense of landing at the end. So whatever meeting you're having, um, having a sense of how are we uh, meeting people where they're at when they arrive in the room, how are we creating a sense of solidarity and uh, I guess the thrill for the adventure, you know, even if it is just your weekly meeting, how are we creating a firm foundation for people to kind of launch on this journey together? And one of the most powerful ways you can do that that's really simple is this acronym I do art, uh, which is around setting an intention, describing a desired outcome, then talking about the agenda, the roles and the rules, and the time for the meeting. Um, you can look this up. I'll drop a, a link to a format for this in the chat once we're done so that you can review that later on. But those are my kind of top tips around the design. Uh, and I will throw back to Dara to talk about delivery. Thank you, Marilee. What's been really interesting in our journey in bringing our online, or sorry, in bringing our in-person programs into the virtual world is this, this sort of beautiful connection between intention and design. And I, I want you to imagine like it, when you are just assembling, say, a Ford versus a Lamborghini, there's obviously a lot more intention involved when you're designing a really high-end sports car versus something like on assembly line like a Ford. Sorry for anyone who drives a Ford. I'm sure they're great cars. I have a Hyundai. Um, but it's, it's just really important to, to know that when we are taking the time to actually design for an experience, to design a meeting, to design the learning, that's when intention is involved. And I think a lot of times, um, going back to that kind of metaphor of assembly, oftentimes when we're gathering in a virtual space, we're just assembling people together. We're just bringing people into the virtual space to talk about a few things. Um, and oftentimes we can sort of feel a little bit lost. Like, raise your hand whether in a virtual space or in a face-to-face -face meeting that you've ever felt like you don't know why you're there, you are bored, you haven't given any insight or asked to share your insights, um, or you've left feeling like you've achieved nothing. Um, and so when we think about how much time is actually wasted on meetings that are frivolous, um, we could actually be taking that wasted time and injecting it into that time of de um, design. And I think sometimes we feel very busy and we just need to get people together and make a point and share our story. Um, but actually so much is lost on missing that initial piece of the design phase. And so I'm sure a lot of you can think back, even back in the day, many months ago, when we used to meet in person, you know, what, did we ever actually design for meetings that we had face to face? Possibly not. And so I would be, you know, saying that now that we're in the virtual space, that intention is even more needed and more important because of our attention spans. Not only are we dealing with what's going on with COVID, but we're at home and we have pets and partners and kids and construction and all these things going on that are taking our attention away. 
So we have to realize um, that really, I think one of the biggest misconceptions about us being in this virtual world is that we can just pluck things from real time and put them into the virtual space, which I think is, is um, setting us up for, for failure because we have to treat it differently. Um, and um, yeah, I think, like I said, things are really amplified when we are in the virtual space. When you are staring at everyone's face on a screen, you can see who's not engaged. You can see who's not paying attention, who's on another link clicking through things. Um, so again, it, there's so much needed around that design and intention piece, which leads me to my first tip, which is really to treat this space like it is a broadcast. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you listen to radio and podcasts. And so when you think about the virtual space as a broadcast, you're going to treat it a lot differently than the real world. Um, so much like we have right now, Eric is the host and Academy XI. I am essentially leading the meeting and Marilee is our production person in the back end. Now, I'm sure some of you have led meetings before virtually already, and you have those moments where, oh shit, I don't know where the share screen button is, oh, or this isn't working, or this is frozen. And so what's happening is you are wanting to hold space and, and create a container around a particular training or conversation, but now you've been ripped out of that space as the person holding the, the people's attention because now your attention is your armpits are sweating, you're, you know, you're anxious, you're trying to figure out what to do next, and you're trying to troubleshoot the technology, um, and you're losing people's attention very rapidly. So again, while it might seem frivolous to have someone just working on the back end of your Zoom meeting, it can actually make things so much more seamless because you as the person running the training or the meeting now has total attention to your participants. You are totally with them. And also you can talk through like, oh, haha, ha, Merrily, we're having a bit of a glitch with the music. And those awkward moments that are created virtually, you're kind of like this voice traffic controller. So, you know, when we used to fly, you know, that back in the day when we would travel, um, you have air traffic controllers who are dealing with all of the planes going back and forth. So when we are in a virtual space, it's your job as the meeting leader to be the voice traffic controller. And I think what, while we might like feel like there's a, a big hindrance in the virtual space, I think there's a big opportunity and possibility because of the way that we have to manage it. So right now, I'm the only one talking, everyone else is on mute. And if I wanted to engage someone else, I might say, hey, Fernando, what do you think? Or hey, Julie, can you give me your insight? And so we're actually creating the conditions for more sharing to be had in a much more um, structured way. And so I laugh, it's like the introvert's dream. If you're introverted and you're in a meeting, you generally get swallowed up by big personalities in the room. I can speak because my husband is an introvert and I definitely oftentimes swallow him up in conversations. <laughs> um, but you know, this is a chance where with that kind of traffic controlling that we can start to say, hey, what do you think? Or I haven't heard from you yet and really use the space as a way to make sure everyone is being heard. Um, and so again, treating it like a broadcast. Also, um, breaks are really important. Um, you know, for us, because we have a finite amount of time, we try and get you out of your chair and do the ding moments and things like that. Um, but if you're trying to deliver a lot of content, it's good to just have like 20 minute segments and then give a few minutes break, go grab a water, go use the toilet. I mean, our attention span is it, like, I'm sure all of us can agree. We're feeling virtually fatigued. We're on the computer for eight hours a day. So anytime we can create those touch points of every 20 minutes, we have a tiny little one or two minute break, even if it's just to get up and move our body, that's just going to help us to be able to maintain our, our attention. Um, so that moves me to the second tip, which is, um, again, intention, intention, intention. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Simon Sinek's work of the starts with why in the golden circle. Again, an agenda is not your why. An agenda is the things that you have to tick off, the things that you need to, to talk about, um, but we're not actually connecting with the why. And so it's important, especially for, again, those human-centered designers out there, we have the five whys. So if you feel like your why is sort of superficial and you're wanting to go deeper, you ask your why of the why and the why of the why and so on and so forth. So um, I think it's just really important, especially when we're trying to create a humanistic like a human connection in a place that feels a little bit disconnected. The intention is what creates the human element 
um, around when we're bringing people into a virtual space. So again, your agenda is going to be separate from your intention. And that little, di um, sorry, the little uh, acronym I do art is a great way to map that out. Um, both around the roles, the roles. So who's leading the meeting, who's hosting the meeting, who's the production manager. Also, um, what are people's responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope, I hope that makes sense around really cultivating that sense of why. Um, so the next tip is around this um, sense of doing one thing at a time. So again, our attention span is very short. And we might try and have a virtual meeting where we're getting people to connect and check in. Then we're sharing some information. There we want to solve a problem. Uh, then we want to share some, some figures. And then we want to um, have a brainstorm. And just like my, my brain melts even just talking about that. So while we want to be really efficient and we want to get everyone in the space and, and go over as many things as we can, we're really missing out on the opportunity to get people to really be listening and engaged by just doing the one thing. So again, you say, okay, I'm going to have this meeting because we need to make a decision. And this meeting, the purpose of this meeting is to make a decision. And that's your meeting. Okay, now this next meeting is we want to, we want to, we want to think of solutions for this problem. Okay, so we're just going to think of solutions. And so again, you create uh, a more, you know, contained way of keeping people's attention on one thing. Because I'm sure a lot of you have felt like you're trying to cover so much in a short period of time, and you, your brain just feels like scrambled eggs at the end. So choosing one thing that you want to explore per meeting. And again, even if you want to do 20 minutes on, on, you know, knowledge sharing, then have a break and then go into another segment of solutions, break another segment, just being really specific on what are we doing? Because again, in, in the real world, there's so many times when we leave a meeting and we go, what the hell was that for? Or why was I there? Or what was the purpose of that? So for us, it's again, creating more purpose-driven ways that we meet online because we're meeting online so much and it's really draining on our mental health and well-being. Cool, so the next tip, is about those ding moments. Now, some of you may or may not own one of these nifty little bells. If you don't, I highly recommend investing in one. But again, it's just an opportunity to, um, what we like to call, it's like a dopamine hit in a way. So uh, when we are engaged in something that's playful or fun, we get a hit of dopamine, which actually helps our focus. So for any of you who have kids or who have nieces and nephews or young cousins, they are the most engaged and the most focused when they're playing. And so when we have this idea of like productivity and focus and being effective, um, oftentimes we don't think of play. Um, and I think that's again for Culture Hero is a very different way that we approach culture because we want people to be productive and focused, but we do that through engaging in play because we know that dopamine is super important when we are trying to get into a flow and get things done. So ding moments. Ding moments can be asking a question. A ding moment can be getting people up out of their seat. A ding moment might be playing an interesting game. Um, a really easy ding moment is like a, a, you can do a caption game. You throw up a random photo and get people to create their own funny caption. Um, so I'm happy to share in our follow-up email a couple of really accessible ding moments where you can kind of just shock people back into the space. Um, if you don't have that, you can always just say ding. But again, I think this is a very nifty little tool. Um, and finally, for our tips on how to engage is just trying to utilize the breakout rooms. I know some of you, your organizations are not using Zoom because of security. Um, if that's the case and you don't have access to breakout rooms, try and have smaller meetings. Try and have, you know, times where people on your team are just connecting with, say, three or four other people. That's where the intimacy takes place. You know, right now with me sharing tips and all of you out there um, in gallery view, um, you're not really intimately connecting with the people in this space. So that's why we wanted to like kind of break out of the normal webinar um, scenario and give you chances to break out into these smaller groups so you can feel what it feels like to connect with people um, that you might not know, hear from other people, you know, hear other people's insights. Um, so those are probably like the, those kind of top high level tips that I think are really actionable that you could probably come in and do, you know, in your meeting this afternoon. Um, so yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, that sort of concludes our, our opportunity to share our tips, both the technical tips 
um, from Eric and our kind of high level engagement tips when you're running a meeting. What we'd love for you to do now is have a chance to, again, get into a breakout room. And we are gonna have a Q&A, but we want you to be able to talk to each other first about your questions and your answers, or sorry, about the questions. So you've had that chance to do the I like, I wish, I wonder. We're gonna pop you into a new group where you can just talk about like, what do I wanna know more of? What am I still curious about? What do I wanna ask? Um, that way we can just have some really succinct questions that you're kind of co-creating as small groups. And then we can start to land and start to have that Q&A space. So Marilee is gonna pop you back into a four person breakout. And again, we'll have about eight minutes or so for you to have a really flowing conversation um, around what are some questions that you have um, that are gonna help you sort of integrate this into your next virtual uh, meeting or, or experience. So we'll see you soon in the next breakout. Seems like people are starting to make their way back into the main room. All right, so hopefully that was useful to just again, connect with a couple of other people and just hear what questions are floating around. Um, I'd love to open it up now for the next sort of, what do we have now? Maybe the next five or so minutes, just to, um, if you have like a representative of your breakout room that uh, might be interested in asking either Eric or I some questions, we'd be obviously more than happy to um, answer them to the best of our ability. Or we could sit in dead silence for an extended period of time. I'm cool with that as well. Eric, I do have a question. It's Fernando. Sure, hi. Uh, hey, man. As far as um, these breakout groups, what are your sizes like? When you break out for two or three weeks at a time and they're working on mirror board and things like that what does that size look like yeah four or five usually um wouldn't really go higher than that um occasionally we'll have scenarios where like we do accelerator programs and things like that um on behalf of clients where they might have a team of like six or seven people each with a specialization area that are on that need to be on that team for various reasons um and so that can dictate numbers but ideally yeah we wouldn't really want to go over four or five um, like the, the Slack channels and things that you use in Miro board, like doesn't have an upper limit in terms of how many people can be involved, but it just like with any project group, it can kind of, yeah. And like Dara was saying earlier, like big personalities will tend to overtake some people and, um, it just gets a bit confusing in terms of division of duties with more than four or five. All right. That makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else keen to ask a question? Yeah, I have a question, probably for you, Dara, I think, sure. um, around the idea of play. How have you found typically that bigger businesses and corporates respond to the idea of including play within like a, or, or maybe you, Eric, as well, within like a training scenario? Because I guess big budgets are being spent there. Do they see it as a valuable use of time? Um, and how do you explain it? I think definitely in the face-to-face -face trainings, I mean, that's pretty much all we do. Whenever we work with a client, whatever the outcome or the, the objective is, we, we always incorporate play into whatever we do. And that's where the learning design comes in. Um, I think when you're wanting people to uh, arrive in a place of presence, if you want them to be curious, if you want them to be experimental, uh, if you want them to cultivate empathy and things like that, um, play is really the, the best way to be able to do that. Um, I think play still has a bit of a PR problem around it being frivolous, mm. but I do hope that with um, the level of constraints that we've had on ourselves socially, that we can start to realize like how important social interaction and connection and fun and joy is in our lives now that it's sort of been taken away from us for the last couple months. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of um, play theory out there and play science 
Um, like I talked about, like dopamine helps you focus more. So there is opportunities to create a little bit more of a case around why play is so important. Um, mm. And we've definitely had a chance to work with some very large corporates who we weaseled our way in there um, using our learning design and things like that to still give those, those outcomes that they want, but kind of coercing them into, into using play as a way to engage. Um, and I'm sure, you know, everyone on this webinar can say that, you know, play is fun, you know, play, play makes us feel good. It makes us feel human. Um, and I think when we're trying to do things like psych safety and social capital and all those buzzwords, play is such a great entry point for that. Mm, yeah, I would kind of maybe add to that. And so, I mean, I talked about a lot earlier about sort of the delivery methods and tools uh, that we use, um, Academy XI. Uh, to deliver training but didn't really talk much about like what we train for um one of our cores is human-centered design and any training that we deliver in that space whether it be corporate or uh, b2c virtual or face-to-face -face, we human-centered designers always use elements of play um kickoff sessions um yeah get people up and uh and sort of like get the blood flowing um we'll We've got quite a few practitioners who borrow elements from improv um, to get people going. And it's, it's incredible to watch. Like people walk into a room, like my experiences from the corporate space, they walk in, they sit down, they're just kind of like, uh, well, here I am again at another X, Y, Z training session for something boring. I don't give a shit about basically. Um, and then, or even if they aren't, they do want to learn, but they're just like not engaged. And then you get them up and moving around, you get them meeting each other, and it comes back to that, like, get them talking to each other. Like, that's the biggest thing. And suddenly they're like, oh, what do you think about that? What do you think about this? They're relating what they're learning to the experience because they're just like, they've got their mouth moving now. They're talking um, and they're doing stuff. And so we've actually, over the years, we pulled all that HCD sort of play and uh, engagement. And we've dropped it into like our technical training as well, like our product management training, um, our data analytics training, which aren't technically, like, aren't traditionally you know, training courses you'd think of being super engaging just because of the nature of the content, but um, there's no reason you can't uh, add those pieces in and frame it and try and use examples um, that are relevant as, as well. So yeah, we use it extensively. Everyone wants to play. You just have to create the right conditions for it. Yeah, we do like Lego serious <laughs> play and it's funny. We've had CEOs, like groups of CEOs doing Lego serious play, literally like making their ideal sort of like work environment or like process flows for service design stuff. Um, and at first, you know, they're like, we're CEOs, we shouldn't be doing this. And then 10 minutes later, they're like, oh, <laughs> and, they're, and they're just going nuts with it and they're having a good time. And you just watch them fall out of their like, I'm such a big important person zone into just, uh, yeah, getting the, the brain cells firing and being creative. It, if I could just share, um... You know, I'm in Orlando, Florida, and, you know, Australia, people go to these destinations, uh, you know, conference in Las Vegas, conference in Sydney, conference in Orlando, and they go and you have these awesome facilitated programs, but it's really about having this communal experience. So uh, I really appreciate what you guys are talking about, uh, having intentional play, because the challenge now, uh, when I do things at, in Orlando and, and theme parks, it, how do I fill that and make it a communal experience virtually? So to your point, you know, we have to uh, inject play. Uh, it can't, you know, take, you know, the whole meeting. Uh, but I think there's a huge gap uh, that is good, needs to be filled if that is, that was the draw, right? Come to Vegas and you're going to have an amazing conference. Yeah, we're gonna have a, we're gonna play, right? We're gonna we're gonna outside of the conference, we're gonna play. So we have to inject that whether it's a two minute session or to your point, two conference uh, calls over two weeks or three weeks or multiple, you know, ten week programs that you talked about. We've got to be very, very, very creative, and maybe it's part of the homework is you know create a fun thirty second YouTube video X Y Z, and uh, so I think you guys bring up a great point but it's a huge gap to fill. It's hard, man. Like, yeah, like we happen to be sort of on the curve before, but this has accelerated it for us and for everyone. And I think that's a really cool idea of, cause you know, it's really hard. And like, you know, we're guilty of it a little bit on this session, even though we've done our best to of just, it's really hard not to talk at people in a virtual environment. Um, but, and then people are like, so they're just on the receiving end of that. 
But what if you were to say like, okay, it's part of your challenge. How are we going to make this engaging for you? Come up with some ideas and then suddenly they're like, hmm, how do I do that? And one side of that is that then they realize how hard it is, which is nice for us. Um, but then maybe some really interesting ideas will come out about how would I get people to think, how would I want to be engaged with? And um, yeah. that could be an interesting, yeah, I've not thought of that. So thank you. That's a great, um, that's a great um, suggestion and outcomes of that are beneficial to both as well. Like you say, the participants will then, you know, learn a new skill like videoing or learn how difficult it is to engage people in a meeting um, throughout the process. Um, and they also understand from the, uh, from the other side of the coin, they may not usually get that opportunity to learn either. So um, I find that sometimes, you know, you're using these tools and you're learning about them, especially in the last few weeks, but to then go away and practice has been on ourselves rather than, you know, and we sort of play with them, but to have the actual specific takeaway to learn would have been really valuable. So I think, um, you know, the participant learning new skills is really valuable, but also then they have that understanding of how to implement them or, or what the presenter's going through as well. Totally, mm. yeah. Play with tech in a safe environment. That's a huge mm. bonus for everybody. Mm. Um, if you're not familiar with the tool, yeah, just use it where you can use it and nothing can really go wrong. Thanks, Julie. I'm, I'm just conscious of the time. We wanted to start to wrap up. So hopefully you've all felt uh, a little bit engaged today. You have a bit more inspiration of how to move forward and change your meetings into something a bit more dynamic and a bit more human. Um, what we'd love for you to do is, um, looks like we did a little check-in. We'd love to do a check-out. So if you can just pop two words in the chat of how you're feeling right now, um, it's a great way for us to, to start to close off the session. So two words of how you're feeling right now. And while you're doing that, I guess just a, a last-ish thought from me. Um, we are, we'll have like a follow-up email to you guys and thank you for coming. Um, we'll also, Academy XI will like to, uh, to offer you a free online course um, of your selection um, in our foundations um, area. So anything that would be of interest to you. Um, if not, no big deal, but uh, it's an offer. And I'm also, um, we're kind of building out our, our um, uh, continuing to build out our product suites and our training suite for, for co corporates and government. So if there's any uh, learning and development managers in the room right now, I'm kind of at a phase where we are, I'm s scheduling just like half hour meetings to really just ha find out what you guys want. Um, Cause we'll build it literally, um, which is kind of cool. So if that is something interested, you're interested in, or you just like more information um, about uh, what we're up to, um, feel free to reach out. And also, if you wanted to pop in the chat, a takeaway that you have, and also if you do have any burning questions that you didn't have a chance to ask, you can always contact me or Eric or Mary Lee via our LinkedIn or visit our websites. Um, and yeah, we'll be sending a follow-up email with a bit more content and things to share around tools and tips. Um, and if you do really like, uh, want to keep being engaged and have a little bit of fun, we run uh, free sessions every Friday for the public um, to, again, just uh, have some fun, get some creative ideas of how to use improv and storytelling um, in your meetings. Uh, but we'll be sure to share all of that with you. In the meantime, thank you so much. We've enjoyed sharing our insights with you. Hopefully you uh, feel a bit more inspired. Uh, and yeah, we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much.